Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that emphasizes God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. There's a battle raging between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, and we are the deciding vo uh, vote in this um, battle. And it's in us taking our authority that either we win or lose, and most people aren't aware of this. And I believe that this is one of the most important things that the Lord has ever taught me. Of course, I say that about just about everything I teach, but I really believe that I teach just basic things, fundamental things that are absolutely essential to the Christian life. And I really feel that this is an area that most people are allowing Satan to beat them in is because they don't know the authority that God has given us. And so there's many believers that are just passively uh, dealing with their problems and petitioning God and asking God for deliverance, for instance, from uh, sickness and disease, not understanding that God gave the power to heal to us. It is not up to God whether or not you get healed and whether you petition Him, but you have to understand your authority and take your authority. And the Bible says in James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The Lord put the responsibility on the believer to resist the devil. The word resist means to actively fight against. And as we resist the devil, he flees from us. And yet most Christians today are asking God to get the devil off their back, asking God to heal them, asking God to prosper them. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 8:18 8, that you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. God doesn't give us wealth. He has given us power and the authority to use that power. And it's not up to you praying and asking God to give you money. You need to recognize God has empowered you and you need to accept the responsibility, take that authority and begin to start releasing the things of God through you using your authority as a believer. I don't know if you got what I just said, but that's major. If you could have understood, I, I guarantee you, the vast majority of people watching this program all over the world, if you could have gotten the truths out of the, just those few introductory remarks I made, if that was to make its full impact on you, it would revolutionize your life. Your health would spring forth. Your prosperity would spring forth. You would recognize in relationships with other people, if you truly understood the believer's authority, how that there's a spiritual warfare going on, I guarantee you it would change the way that you relate to other people. But let me just introduce this by making a statement that is going to shock some of you. But really, most believers are very humanistic in their dealings on a daily basis. Now, the word humanist or uh, humanistic is very offensive to most believers. Of course, there's a humanist manifesto, and, and I won't go into a long deal on this, but basically people who call themselves humanist are people who deny God, deny that there is any spiritual power, either God or the devil. They think everything is only on a human level. Therefore, any problems that you have, there is no spiritual basis to any of it. Everything is just physical. Sickness is all physical. Emotional problems are all physical. Relations are all physical. Everything has its answer in people. They don't believe in God or any spiritual realm. And, of course, that's offensive to believers. But did you know that to a large degree most believers live their life like a humanist, not realizing that there are spiritual powers going on and warring against us every day. Let me just give you a couple of four instances. I won't take time to turn over and establish this. We'll be going through a lot of this in more detail and looking at it closer. But there are many times, I'd say close to 50% of all of the healings that Jesus produced when he was praying for people were spiritual. He would cast a spirit of deafness out of a person and instantly they would hear. Uh, dumbness, not an, an ability not to speak was demonic. Uh, a fever uh, in the eighth chapter of the book of Matthew where uh, Peter's mother-in-law had a fever. He rebuked the fever. In other words, implying that there was a spiritual power behind it. So a, a fever, a headache was uh, something that 
was demonic in origin. Uh, the woman who was bent over and couldn't lift herself up, which, which would be comparable to curvature of the spine today and things like that, that was demonic. Jesus many times cast demons out of people to affect a physical healing. As a matter of fact, it says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power and with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That verse makes it very clear that the physical healings, they were oppressions of the devil. Now, I don't believe that every physical sickness is demonic. Like, for instance, if you cut yourself with a saw or something, I don't believe it's demonic that caused your finger to fall off or if you get an infection. I think some things are natural, but there certainly are instances in the Word of God where sickness had a spiritual reason. And if you are trying to deal with sickness that has a spiritual root and you're trying to deal with it with physical things, then that's humanistic. You are denying the spiritual power that is behind it. And I can tell you many instances that I've prayed with people and they, they say things like, well, the doctors are just baffled. They've run every test. There's no reason. They can't find any reason why these things are doing. And so as I pray with them, the Lord speaks to me and shows me that the reason that the doctors can't find any physical thing that's causing it is because it's not physical, it's spiritual. And there are many times, I would suspect hundreds, maybe thousands of times that I've prayed with people and taken authority over a demonic thing and seen people instantly delivered and set free. And it's because there wasn't a physical root of this thing. It was spiritual in its nature. And again, see, if you, I know that most of the people probably watching my broadcast right now all over the world. What I'm saying is a, uh, it's kind of offensive. It's out of the norm. And you think, oh, I'm not sure that that's so. But see, again, to me, that reflects how humanistic we've become, even in the body of Christ, to where we are looking for a physical, organic reason for all physical sickness. We do the same thing with emotional things. Many believers are thinking that there is just some imbalance in their hormones. They've got a chemical imbalance. They've got all of these things. They're looking for some organic reason when there are plenty of examples in Scripture where things are demonic in origin. origin. And see, if you don't understand this, if you don't recognize that we're in a spiritual war, and so you go about trying to fix your physical body, your emotions, your finances, relationships. I'm going to show you some scriptures where Jesus turned around and I mean to Peter just said, get behind me, Satan. And he wasn't talking to Peter, calling him the devil, but there was a demonic power speaking through him that was causing problems. Jesus perceived that and very clearly made the statement that Satan was the one inspiring what Peter had to say, that's in the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew. We're going to talk about that in more detail. But see, if you don't understand this, that relationships, finances, physical things, all kinds of things have as a root a spiritual origin. Satan is coming against you. We are in a battle every single day. And if you don't understand that, that doesn't mean that the battle isn't raging. That doesn't mean that you're exempt from the war just because you don't acknowledge it. No, it's raging, and what it means is if you aren't aware that many things, I could even say probably most things that we are dealing with have a spiritual root to it, and if you don't know how to take your authority and resist the devil to see him flee from you, it doesn't mean you won't be in the battle. It just means you're going to lose the battle because you can't win a spiritual battle with physical weapons. You can't fight in the flesh. You've got to recognize that there is a demonic realm out there. Demons are real. They are not all in some third world country where they have witch doctors and they're still practicing pagan rituals. In all of the developed countries in the United States, Europe, all across the world, every place that this program is being uh, watched, there is demonic activity and there are things going on. And you've got to be aware of this spiritual warfare and recognize that you have to take your authority and use it to win this war. It, it, it is not going to be won automatically. It is not going to be won without your awareness and without you dealing with it. I tell you, that is just so simple. And yet, again, I say that most Christians are not focused 
on the spiritual realm. They aren't aware of the activity of demons, and because of it, that is just giving Satan a free hand to rule and to do what he wants to do. So part of this series is just being making you aware that there is a spiritual warfare going on and that we have to take our authority and use it in order to see victory. Let me use this verse out of uh, Ephesians chapter 2. And in verse 1 it says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Notice in verse 2 it says that before you got born again, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. This isn't just a statement that is made about one person who was very given over to the devil like the Gadarene demoniac in Mark the fifth chapter or something like this. This is just a blanket statement that before you were born again, every one of you, now think about this, some of you are going to struggle with this, but according to this verse, the spirit of this world the prince of the power of the air worked in every one of us before we were born again. Now, there are many of you that would just reject that out of hand and say, there is no way I wasn't demon-possessed. And I'm not going to get into this. I'm just going to mention this and we're going to go on. But I'm not going to debate being possessed, oppressed, depressed. Some people make a major deal and say a Christian could never be possessed. You could only be oppressed. And they make a big deal. In the Greek, the word in every instance where it talks about a person having a demon, it basically literally transliterates to being demonized. It's just saying that Satan is afflicting you. There are varying degrees. Sometimes he just inspires you as... I've already used that example about Peter. Peter had just made the statement that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, a tremendous statement that Jesus said... Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. He credited that with an inspiration from the Holy Ghost and said that it was through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that he was able to make this great confession. And in just minutes, Peter turned around when Jesus said that he was going to be crucified and buried and then risen on the third day. And, and Peter turned around and says, That be far from you, Lord. It'll never happen. I'll defend you to the death. And Jesus turned right around to him just minutes after he had complimented on him, him on being inspired by the Lord. And he said, uh, get behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to the things of God. And he recognized that Satan was behind those, those statements. You know, I know that many of you get shocked with this and think, well, I've never had the devil use me. Man, any time... You give in to anger and bitterness and fear and you gripe and complain and you gossip and you do so, there's just so many things. We're going to be expounding on this in a lot greater way. Did you know that that is yielding to the influence, to the suggestions, uh, to the promptings of demonic things? Now, we have a fallen nature that, of course, some of these things just seem to come normally especially before you're born again. But there is demonic powers that inspire people and cause offense and do all of these things. And if you aren't aware of that, well, then you just are missing the truth here that every one of us, every one of us, not some of us, not the really bad ones, not the just terrible God haters, every one of us walked according to the course of this world, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the children of disobedience. This is talking about a spirit, a spirit, a demonic power that is operating in unbelievers. There is a spirit of antichrist that is loosed in this world. And I know that I'm unsettling some of you because you've got your life all figured out and it's just so simple and you don't realize, you just have ignored the spiritual realm. You are looking at everything in a totally humanistic way and you just think that there's a physical reason for everything. And I'm unsettling some of you to bring this up, but this is what the Bible teaches. And if you aren't aware that it is not just people that you're dealing with, there are demonic powers. 
operating through people, and that's causing a lot of things. If you don't know that, and if you're trying to just deal with people on a human level and not recognizing that there is a demonic power operating behind and through people, then you are going to be ineffective. Here's another scripture in the book, Ephesians chapter 6, and in verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It's talking here that we are resisting the devil. There is a spiritual warfare. And then in the next verse, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's just as plain as you can make it. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. There are some of you watching this program that think, boy, those kids of mine, and I just can't understand why they're doing this. And you're trying to deal with everything only in a physical, humanistic way. Even as believers, you may be praying and asking God for intervention, but you think it's all just organic. You think it's their hormones because they turned a teenager and, and something happened. I'm telling you that there is demonic intervention. And if you don't recognize that some things, I'm not saying that everything, but some things are demonic in their origin. If you don't understand this, and if you're dealing with things only from a human standpoint and thinking that there is only a physical, organic reason, just a chemical reason in their, you know, as they're changing in their body, that there's just natural, physical things. If you think everything is totally natural, you are totally in violation of what the Scripture is saying right here. Because we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. You aren't wrestling against your children. You aren't wrestling against your mate. You aren't wrestling against your boss or the person that's at work. It's not just physical. It's not just human. There are demonic powers operating behind the scenes that are inspiring people. And you know, the sad thing is that it seems like that there are many more people who are yielded to and cooperating with the devil than there are people who are cooperating with God. I mean, there are many people that are just uh, allowing the devil full access to them, and there is hatred and bitterness and strife and selfishness and criticism. There are people at work that will stab you in the back, and you look at it as, well, what's wrong with that person? Well, some of them have just given themselves over to the devil, and there are demonic things operating through them. And you are, again, let me just say that you are not going to win a spiritual battle with physical weapons. It's not going to be natural. The point I'm trying to get across as I begin this series on the believer's authority, before I get to talking about how, where you get this authority from, how you use it, who you use it against, and all of the things that we'll be dealing with, you've got to realize that it is not just natural what is going on. There is demonic, there are demonic forces at work behind the scenes. Now, let me just balance this. As I go through this series, I'm going to spend a lot of time trying to balance this. But let me just say today, in a balance to all the things that I've said, that if you are just hearing this for the first time and all of a sudden, you know, you realize that some of the things that you've been dealing with in just the natural realm, you now realize that there's a spiritual uh, power behind it. There is a danger that you get to where you see a demon on every doorknob to where you think that every time a person twitches, you know, if they have an eye twitch or any habit, that you think that that's a demon controlling them. I remember those things in my own life when I first came into this. I saw a demon everywhere. I thought everything was totally demonic. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, I think that sometimes the devil actually takes notes on us. <laughs> you know, I believe that they might have a manager's meeting in hell. And, boy, they were reporting and they're saying... Boy, did you see how this person screwed up their life? Did you see the way that they have totally destroyed their life and so many terrible things have happened? And probably those demons come back and report and the devil is taking notes on us and saying, I never thought of that. I never thought of how I could destroy a person's life. I mean, I'm sure that the demons sometimes are amazed at the way we supernaturally destroy our own lives and some of the things that we do. I am not saying that everything that happens is demonic. We live in a world that is fallen. We live among people that 
have a fallen human nature. And there is plenty of bad and evil things that happen without demonic intervention. And so there has to be some discernment. As we go through this, I'm going to be talking a lot about this, and I'm going to be talking about how you have to take responsibility for your own actions. You can't just blame everything on the devil. It's totally incorrect to say, well, the devil made me do it. One of the major points that I'm going to make as we go through this series is that the devil never made anybody do anything. He can't force you to do anything. All he can do is tempt you. He can't do anything to you without your consent and cooperation. And so there's abuses on both sides of this. There are many people, I would say the majority of people go through their life really not even understanding that there is a spiritual war. They are fighting things in the human arena, thinking that all of their problems, physical, financial, emotional, relational, everything is just human. And so therefore they're only using human effort, human power, and they aren't getting the results because they don't recognize it's a demonic uh, root to the thing. I'd say that that's where most people err. But then there are some people that go the other direction that put so much emphasis on the devil that they take no personal responsibility and they say, well, the devil made me do it when that's not true. He can't force you to do anything. There's a balance between these two, and I just wanted to mention that. We're going to get into a lot more detail and deal with that in greater depth. But you need to recognize that there is a spiritual war and that we have the power and the authority to use God's power and it depends on whether you use it as to whether Satan is going to be overcome.